As a celebrated seafood chef and champion of sustainable fishing practices, Rick Noonan is always looking to the kitchen for creative solutions. It's a pleasure to be in your kitchen, chef. You know, one subject that I know is on the tip of your tongue and one that is on mine is sustainability. For sure, it's something I believed in for many, many years. Let's talk about uh, fish in particular. Uh, we have done a pretty good job of over trawling, over fishing. Sure. Where are we today? Well, today we're finally at a tipping point of realization, I believe, you know, and um, what I try to promote is diversity. There are so many species of fish in the ocean that we just don't consume. We don't see it as our dinner. Uh, on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm trying to show that with diversity, we we'll take the pressure off of those few fish that we think are so wonderful and delicious and allow them to rebound and have a chance to uh, live in that environment and populate. Tell me about this guy here. Okay, what I want to show you is a lionfish. This fish is not indigenous to our environment, but somebody decided to introduce them to the Atlantic Ocean, where they did not belong. They're now known as invasive species. You're not supposed to be there, guys. <laughs> so what are we gonna do with them? All right, we're gonna take them and carefully fillet them because they have these spines on them that are very, very, very poisonous. But the flesh is perfectly safe and perfectly fine. It's all in the fins. So we cut the fins off, we remove the fillet, and what I'm gonna show you today is something that we're serving in our, in our sushi bar and on our menu at RM Seafood, and it's lionfish ceviche. Everybody loves ceviche. Ceviche is so, so good. So lionfish ceviche, mm -hmm. how can we make this at home? What are the ingredients? Okay, first we're gonna take the the diced up lionfish fillet. So if you notice that they're not, they're in chunks. That's That way it maintains the integrity of, of the fish. And you see the color of it right now? Yeah. How white it is? Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna add some yuzu juice, which is acidic. As you mix it, go ahead, you'll see that it becomes, starts to become opaque. The acidity starts to have a reaction with the proteins, much like if you were putting it into a hot pan. So the proteins are denaturing, which sounds horrible, but that's what's happening. Okay, now I'm gonna add some saltiness to it. So that's fish sauce. It adds a little bit of ocean flavors to it. Umami makes your mouth water. Now I let that sit for just a minute, just okay. mix it really, really well, because this is basically like searing it in a pan. Actually, see the color of it has changed pretty dramatically. Yeah. It's, it, it went from bright white, of course, the color of the fish sauce added a little bit. It's not quite there yet, as far as where, where, where we're going, so we're gonna add a little bit more. I want some heat. Some spice. Some spice. This, this is spice. Thai chilies, and that is spicy stuff. This is a uh, yomomomo, or the pickled bayberry. All right, so now some diced shallots. Mix, mix, mix. Diced tomatoes, shallots are aromatic, as you know. We had some cilantro. Cilantro has also a cooling effect on your palate, as, as an herb. Now we're gonna add some uh, diced cucumber. These are sea beans. Sea beans, a lot of fun. These add a little bit more crunch and a different kind of crunch. And again, another layer of saltiness to it. Where can we get sea beans? Sea beans can be purchased in a specialty produce department. Okay, now this is a, a vinaigrette made with uh, fresh fennel and perineau, a little bit of, uh, of uh, white soy and rice wine vinegar. That gets mixed in. That's the, that, that's the final juiciness of this dish. That has a little bit of oil in it. There is no oil in this dish whatsoever. So you know what? You're gonna get some heat. You're gonna get some flavors, but you're, gonna see, you're still gonna be able to taste the fish. And that's what I mean when I say maintain the integrity of this dish. Okay, now we're gonna let that sit for a minute because on ice, ch super chilling, allowing the flavors to come together. And while that's happening, we're gonna fry up some lionfish that has been thinly sliced on a bias and then pounded between pieces of plastic with a little coating of, of, of potato starch. Here, we're gonna serve this warm, so it's gonna be a warm chip kind of like you're doing a taco or an enchilada or something where you're gonna have, you can put some of your ceviche on top of it and eat it together oh, as a chip. Amazing. So this is super simple. I don't even season this. This is just goes into a, a 350 degree fat fryer. So you can pan fry these. What kind of oil do you recommend? Do you, are we in olive oil, vegetable oil? This is a vegetable oil. Vegetable Neutral oil, oil is, is, what I, is what I recommend. So then we're gonna take them out carefully okay. to drain the excessive oil off of them. While these are doing that, we're going to Take a little ring mold, and we're going to make a fancy setup of the ceviche. How important is presentation to you when you see a meal come out? I think it's really important. So I give it a little bit of compression. I want to press it down a little bit. So there's the ceviche in our ring mold. Remove that real carefully. Then we garnish that with some of these what they call microgreens. So there you have it, Didi, our lionfish ceviche with lionfish chips on the side, some micro Asian greens, packed with flavor and super, super refreshing. And you really get the opportunity to experience lionfish. 
Beautiful, let's try it. Take one of those chips. Take a chip? Take a chip, put a little bit on top, just like that, and? Cheers, chef. Oh, oh. <laughs> true sustainability. And there you have it, lionfish ceviche. It's delicious, it's the kind of dish you can have at maybe a party at your home. And if you're not wanting to make it yourself, you can always come to RMC Food here in Las Vegas at Mandalay Place.